Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the Easy Learn AI. Today we are going to learn about CNN, which is one of the most important models of deep learning. CNN stands for Convolutional Neural Network, and it is a type of neural network that performs very well in image processing and pattern recognition. An image is made up of a grid of data called pixels. And each pixel contains data in RGB values. CNNs learn by extracting and learning the spatial features of this image data. And they are used to recognize patterns based on this. For this purpose, CNN mainly consists of convolutional layer, pooling layer, and fully connected layer. CNN are made up of these layers. First, the convolutional layer is an important component used mainly for image processing and pattern recognition in CNNs. The convolutional layer creates a new feature map by performing a convolution operation between the input image and a small filter, which calls kernel. This allows the network to de detect and extract local patterns in the image. Convolution operation is a process that calculates and sums up the element-wise multiplication between the filter and the image. It slides over the image, calculating the element-wise multiplication with the filter. It moves the kernel in the same way and calculates the values of the convolution. The results calculated in this way are collected to create a new feature map. This is the essence of the convolution operation. So, what is the significance of the convolution operation? Let's assume we have the following image and kernel, for example. Then, if we perform the convolution operation, The feature map 1 created by kernel 1 is generated as follows. And what about a kernel 2? Let's perform the convolution operation in the same way. The feature maps created by each kernel are generated as follows. As you can see, the kernel similar to the features of the image produce high output values. And the kernel that does not reflect the features of the image produces low output values. So if we think more broadly, assuming there are these various kinds of kernels, when an image of MDST1 is input, the convolution output values of straight-shaped kernels will be high. And when an image of MNIST0 is the input, the convolution output values of the curved-shaped kernels will be high. If we think of the output values of the convolution as a kind of probability, the role of the convolution layer can be seen as analyzing the local features of the given image and returning probabilities. Moreover, as the convolution layers become deeper, they can handle complex local features. That's why, as the convolution layers deepen, they can classify complex images like dogs and cats. 
Also, the size of the corner and the stride are important factors that adjust the size of the output layer of the convolution layer. Two corners of different sizes will create feature maps of different sizes. Just as an image with more pixels become more detailed, the larger the size of the feature map, the more details of the feature it can express. Therefore, if the size of the corner is small, it can handle detailed features. But this also increases the amount of computation, so it is important to find the right size. The stride is also an important factor that determines the size and amount of the computation of the feature map. If the stride is 1, the convolution operation moves one step at a time. If the stride is 2, the convolution operation moves 2 steps at a time. Thus, even if the size of the corner is the same, the size of the feature map can vary depending on the stride. The size of the corner and the stride should be set to balance the amount of computation and the accuracy of the model. In addition, convolution layers usually introduce non-linearity using an activation function. A typical activation function is the ReLU, Rectified Linear Unit Function. The activation function applies non-linearity to the output of the convolution, convolutional layer and allows the model to learn complex patterns. Next, the pooling layer reduces the size of the feature map extracted from the convolutional layer. There are mainly two types of pooling layers used in CNNs. One is max pooling, and the other is average pooling. The max pooling layer returns the maximum value within the given pooling window and the average pooling layer returns the average value within the given pooling window. Through these pooling layers, it is possible to reduce the spatial size and preserve important features while reducing computational costs. Finally, the dense layer creates the final output based on the extracted features. To create the final output, the fully connected layer is usually at the end of the CNN model. It generates a flattened layer that turns all local features into one dimension before the fully connected layer. Then it sends the output value to the fully connected layer connected to all local features to calculate the final output. Local features are just local probabilities. To calculate the final probability, the entire image must be considered. That's why a fully connected layer that receives inputs from all local features is necessary in the last step. Now let's conceptually look at how such layers come together in a CNN and learn. For a co conceptual explanation, let's assume such a CNN Let's think of this CNN model as a deep learning model that distinguishes between dogs and cats. So if a dog image is entered as input, the output becomes 0, 1. And if a cat image is entered as input, let's assume that the output becomes 0 and 1. So if a picture of dog comes in, Let's say the final output value of the feedforward results is 0 0.7 and 0. Then to reduce the error of 0 0.3, the weights of the corners are gradually changed to resemble the local features of the dog's image. And let's say the final output value for a cat image is 0, 0.8. 
Then to reduce the error of 0.2, the weights of the corners are gradually changed to re resemble the local features of the CAD image. Of course, the backpropagation and gradient descent method are used for the corner weight change algorithm. Through such a process, with repeated learning through a lot of data, each of the corners transforms into corners that distinguish well between the local features of dogs and cats. And finally, I would like to talk about the similarity between the CNN model and the human visual information process. The visual information that enters through the eyes goes through the LGN thalamus to the primary visual cortex V1 and then up to V2, V4 and the IT region in order. It is known that the complexity of the features processed in the human visual information process increases as it goes up to higher areas. This is very similar to the characteristic of CNNs that handle complex forms of features as the convolutional layers deepen. Of course, we cannot say that CNNs have the same mechanisms as the human visual processing, but it is interesting to note that CNNs show some similar similarities to the human visual information process in a broad sense. I appreciate your engagement and look forward to exploring further with you in the next session. Until then, farewell. Your interest and love for this channel help a lot in preparing these lectures. So please don't forget to hit the like and subs subscribe button.